What is PAD? What are the risk factors for PAD? So PAD is peripheral arterial disease. It's a long word, multiple syllables, but it's pretty simple to understand. It basically means arterial occlusive disease of the arteries in the legs. That's also lots of syllables. Let me break it down further. Think about plumbing. Think about a plumbing in your kitchen sink. It's supposed to be wide open and water is supposed to flow through it easily. But sometimes what happens? It gets clogged up and the water can't flow through so as, uh, as well. This can also happen in the arteries in the body. Many people are familiar with something very similar to peripheral arterial disease. It's called coronary artery disease. People probably know what that is in the heart. The arteries in the heart can get clogged. And what does that do? It causes heart, uh, chest pain and it can cause a heart attack. A lot of people are familiar with CAD. So PAD, a peripheral arterial disease, is the exact same disease process. It's only, it's not in the arteries in the, in the heart, it's the arteries in the legs. The same disease can happen, the same occlusive process, blocking or clogging of the arteries can happen in the arteries in the legs. And just like in the heart, it can cause pain in the legs. Most people, you know, it's interesting, when you talk about the awareness of these diseases, they're very similar diseases, they're the same disease, CAD and PAD, just in different arteries in the body. When you think about the awareness, a lot of people are aware. Most people in the Western world are aware of coronary artery disease. And most people, if they have chest pain, they think, boy, I could be having a heart attack in my heart arteries or heart disease I could have. They know that intuitively. How many patients, when they have leg pain, think, boy, I wonder if it's peripheral arterial disease. Not that many. And that's unfortunate. The awareness of PAD is much lower than it is for CAD. But this is one of the things we like to do. We want to do, it's one of our goals, to raise awareness of PAD. Now, to be fair, not all leg pain is PAD. Probably most of leg pain is not. Most of leg pain is going to be musculoskeletal, an arthritis type of thing. But if you have leg pain, you don't have a cause for it. You don't have arthritis. Particularly if the leg pain is worse when you walk or go upstairs, and then it gets better when you rest. That's called intermittent claudication. That's a classic sign of PAD. If your legs hurt even at rest when you're sitting around, that's worrisome. That, that could be rest pain, and that's the sign of advanced PAD or blocked arteries in the legs. Um, of course, another sign is wounds. You know, we've all had wounds in our life. Think about when you were a kid and you'd ride your bike and you'd fall and skin your knee. You know, you'd cry a little, your mom might put a band-aid on it. But, you know, a few days later, it kind of scabbed over. In a week, it was almost gone, and in a month, it was totally gone. How did that happen? It's the body's miraculous healing process, right? It sent arterial blood with white blood cells and nutrients, like a repair crew, and it fixed and it repaired and healed that wound. So that should be what happens with every wound in your body. If you scratch yourself or anything, it should heal and go away. If you have wounds on your leg, a wound or multiple wounds, and they're not healing or they're very slow to heal, think about PAD. The arteries in your legs might be clogged and they're just not getting enough blood flow, arterial blood flow, to send that repair crew to heal those wounds. So these are the two big signs and symptoms I recommend all patients look for. A wound that's not healing or slow to heal on your legs, ankle, or feet, and leg pain with no other obvious cause. These two things are worrisome. If you have either one of these, call us, make an appointment with us, have your referring physician send you to us. We want to evaluate you. We're not going to do anything Invasive, no procedure. We're going to evaluate you, do an ultrasound, ABI, listen to your history, and we're going to see if you have if your arteries are occluded in your legs. And if you do, then we'll go over the treatment options, which is the procedure we do, and we're very good at a minimally invasive outpatient procedure. Not that same day; it would be shortly after your evaluation day. So that's peripheral arterial disease, arterial occlusive disease of the lower extremity arteries or leg arteries that become slowly narrowed and blocked over time. What are the risk factors for PAD? Um, I talked about this in another video. Um, basically, it's the same risk factors for diabetes and coronary artery disease, and it relates primarily to nutrition, uh, the consumption of processed food, sugar, processed carbohydrates, bread, cookies, muffin, cakes, uh, cereals, etc. These are fake foods. These are foods were not around throughout most of human existence. They've started coming around 10,000 years ago in the first agricultural revolution, but more recently in the past 50 years or so, their growth has exploded. And the percentage of calories that uh, 
people in Western civilization consume from processed food is extremely high. And no surprise, the prevalence of diabetes, PAD, CAD is also the highest in the world. So the number one risk factor for PAD is the consumption of processed foods, namely sugar, processed carbohydrates, and other processed foods. If you want to avoid PAD or possibly even reverse it, modify what you're eating. Eat what nature gave you. What your great-grandfather 10,000 years ago ate, which is meat and eggs, vegetables, and occasional fruit. If you're obese or have diabetes, don't even eat the fruit. If you stick to this, eating what nature gave you, and don't eat any of the processed stuff, any stuff that comes in a box or a package or anything like that with an ingredient label, don't eat any of that, you should be able to avoid PAD or even reverse it. That's the number one risk factor, processed food consumption that relates to PAD. The second one is smoking. Uh, smoking is tough. It's tough to quit. We get it. You got to quit. Don't smoke. If you never smoke, don't. And if you smoke, quit. High risk factor for PAD. And then uh, finally, activity. Stay active. Right? You don't have to exercise. You don't have to squat or deadlift or be, do Olympic lifts. But you should stay active. Again, like your grandfather 10,000 years ago. Walk, move, stretch. Be active throughout the day. If you have a sedentary job like I do, get up frequently and move around. You don't have to do eight hours of brutal workouts like they do on The Biggest Loser. That makes for good dramatic TV, but that's not uh, what you need at all. Just stay active. So these are the risk factors associated with PAD, namely the consumption of processed food, mostly processed carbohydrates, number two, smoking, number three, lack of activity. So if you control for all these, you should be able to prevent PAD and potentially even reverse it.